So this week's episode of basic ass techniques that I actually use at Black Belt, we're going to do the rear naked choke. Now, obviously, the rear naked choke is advanced or basic depending on the user, right? Everybody at every level uses the rear naked choke. It's one of the most common submissions. But in particular, if you have an issue where you get here and you can't quite finish it because they peel it off, or if you are one of those people that gets to back mount, get your hooks in, the whole thing, and for whatever reason you cannot get the choke, then some of the tips in this video are going to be super useful to you. I believe they were useful to me for those situations. And so with that said, me and my lovely assistant, Mr. Adam Wilson, are going to dive into the rear naked choke. All right, guys. So one of the most common ways that you will get into the back mount if you're a competitor or if you're just rolling a lot is when you pass someone's guard and they begin to turtle, right? It happens all the time that we get to our back, okay? So that's what we're gonna kind of go off of because again, the last video that I showed you was getting to the back off of a guard pass. So here's one of the biggest things. I'm gonna show you from a drilling standpoint. I'm also getting to the details and I'll also sure to give you a strategic idea to think about, okay? So let's first talk about the rear naked choke here. Come on down and then we'll get into the position. When we're in the rear naked choke, let me show you some details. I don't care if you're going under or over side, it doesn't really matter to me. You can play both, okay? Here's one of the things that I see people do really badly and I think this will make a big difference in your rear naked choke game, okay? When you go here, do not just shoot your hand like this. This is a terrible grip, but again, when you go to your gym, you might do this already, and if you look around when your coach does rear naked chokes, look at how many people do this, okay? Obviously, you can look at this on a video and realize this is not good, but when you're in the middle of a hard roll, sometimes you don't think about it. The issue right now is that we're straight on front, right? We don't have this carotid cut off, and he can easily come up to defend. It's a problem for us. So what you wanna think about doing is you really wanna think about shooting your elbow forward here, and you wanna think about almost reaching out with your lat, okay? So from here, when I go for a choke, it's out here like this. This does a couple things. One, this gives me this great pincher right here on his carotids. So my elbow's in front. There really is no frontal, uh, front pressure on his windpipe. All of it's on the carotids, which is nice. So as I bring my arms together, I can get the choke. Also, with the depth, I can get back here and grab his shoulder and his trap. This is going to make it, and if you're longer, you'll get it even deeper. But this is going to make it difficult. So if Adam tries to reach back and defend, it's very easy for me to block. I can even take my head or my hand and block the grip here. Okay, And this makes it easier if I want to go for one-arm chokes, for rear naked chokes. There's a lot of different ways you can choke here, but it's much easier to do this with that grip here. And this is the same if we were underneath here. We don't want to just get like this. You want to shoot that elbow through and get down deep. right? And that's one of the simplest things that I can show people. But again, it's simple, but getting that depth underneath when you go in for the back mount, if you do that, it makes your choke so much tighter, so much deeper, and especially if you do it with what I'm about to show you now. So when I go for the back, strategically, I do not go for the double hooks first. I know that you need them for points if you're competing, and we have gotten obsessed with this idea that like back mount looks like this. Right, we've got, got two hooks and we got the seat belt, but really the back mount is this. The back mount is the chest to back connection. Everything else is sort of like arbitrary and secondary, right? You can have a body triangle, you can have hooks. I play half back a lot with like one hook in, one hook out, but this is what we're looking for because if I have connected to his back, I can choke him, okay? So what ends up happening a lot of times in my matches and in my roles that are with really tough people is I don't actually get to a full back position before I'm choking. So turn it for me. You'll get into these positions a lot, right? So let's say I'm shooting in with this near side hook and we're rolling. We're falling to the side right here. Now, there's this moment right now. I just got him tilted, okay? He's thinking elbow to knee, let's defend the second hook, right? Now, that, that's not a bad thing, right? Because again, he doesn't want to give up that second hook. But here's the issue. This takes away one of his defensive hands from his neck and especially in the middle of the transition, if we shoot through, boom, like this all day long. And that's where I, I get a lot of my chokes. I've got them with the near side leg. Turtle up. Sometimes even getting right here, shooting through, hooking, and again, just right into this and shooting in for the choke all the time. But I get most of my chokes when I'm rolling against tough people in transition while we're going for the back takes, and I'll show you the back takes that I use primarily in another episode of the series. But I get them before I actually get the, ch uh, the double hooks. Now here's the cool part. Let's say I've now got Adam in a choke here, right? I've got him in this choke. He now comes up to defend. 
Well, let's say that I can't quite finish it. Well, no problem. I can get my second hook in. And I can fight off. And if nothing else, if it was a competition, I've now got points. Or if it's just a roll in the gym, I've now got a good position. And now we can slow things down and we can begin to hand fight and disable arms and all that other stuff. But a lot of times what I find from people is if they get caught where the person's able to defend, we want to punch that, that grip through as deep as we can. That usually takes care of that because they are no longer bringing that hand sort of, sort of nice and casually in there, right? They're punching it through and really turning their body into it to get that depth. And then also, if they do it in the transition, if you look at a lot of a little high level black belts and a lot of high level competitors and high level roles, like even in your gym, most of the time you'll see submissions caught in the transition when guys are moving and things are vulnerable and, and stuff's just more open. Now, here's a way to drill this in your gym to make your chokes a little bit better. Anytime you're doing a back take, go ahead and add a choke to the very end of it. So last week I showed you my double underpass. If you haven't seen that, you can go to the links below. There'll be a playlist available to you. But let me show you how that would look if I was drilling that. So last week we were looking at that double underpass here. Boom, I got down here nice and low. Hip switch, gut wrench, stacked them up. Boom, shooting in the knee position here and got to this, the truck here. Now check this out. I'm gonna pinch, stomp, shoulder hook, strip forward, and then again, notice where I'm at right now. I'm up on my elbow, okay? Now when I bring my hand in, I'm not gonna bring it in nice and soft and casual. I've got my hand making a nice, thin sort of knife because even if he's tucking his chin a little bit, I'm gonna skirt around the side here with this part of my hand, okay? But we're here. And then from here, boom, shooting underneath. And with the shoulder hook, what's really nice about this is if I get underneath here, boom, I can immediately grab the wrist here and start to go for the finish. I don't need two hooks. I don't need this other hand here. If with the depth on this thing, I've got here and here, and I just put my chin to it, easily finish, okay? And so again, that's something you can do. Add a choke to the end of all of your back takes. So if your coach is teaching you a back take, cool. Do your back take just like your coach shows you and then throw the choke in there. Because what ends up happening a lot of times is in jiu-jitsu, people get used to a particular type of tempo. Watch like, uh, for instance, you see this in other combat sports, watch some people do kickboxing or boxing. And in some cases, you'll get this thing where like, ta, 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 I hit them and then boom, 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 they hit me. And you get to sort of back and forth. And people get used to this position before submission thing because I guess that's the motto jiu -jitsu, right position before submission which is good but the, the thing about back mount is the position for back mount when it's dangerous for the person has happened well before the, the hooks have happened the hooks are what we arbitrarily use to score but you can be submitted as soon as like I mean Adam can be on his side over here right here like I can choke him right now on the side with no hooks no nothing I can finish this sucker I've done this in competitions too I call it the spoon choke like like your spoon hanging out okay so Again, that happens. And so what you can do is you can take advantage of that. You can take advantage of the fact that your opponent will still be going to be thinking about your hooks and you're thinking about their neck. A great example of this being used in action, just as of recent memory, not even my matches, was at the ADCC trials. So I was there in 2022, the uh, West Coast trials. So for people in the, in the future, you can go back and watch those matches if you want to. And there were a ton of guys that either got their chokes finished or began sinking the chokes in before they actually had both hooks sunk in. People were so good at defending the hooks, but then their neck was open. So that's a way that I've taken that rear naked choke, that basic rear naked choke that we learned early on and taken it and made it a little bit more advanced by simply increasing my ability to hit it when we're not actually in the back mount fully. So again, playing into a situation where my partners are not gonna be as developed defensively. They're, once we get into the, the actual back mount position where we're holding the hooks, things slow down, the hand fighting has to be a little bit better. But a lot of times in those transitions, if you practice that shooting in for the choke, you can catch them a lot quicker. So hopefully that's useful to you with your rear naked chokes. Try that out the next time you're doing some back mount stuff or the next time you're rolling. I'm finished. Adam. Adam. So guys, before the video is over, quick disclaimer on what I was saying in the video, because I know someone's going to say something, right? It always happens. So in the video, I was talking about the fact that if you get that, that, that grip straight across the neck, that's not like... I said, I think I even said terrible in the video. 
It's just not ideal. Can you choke someone by going straight on the windpipe like that? Of course you can. You can get the finish like that any, any day of the week. Um, but again, if you are having trouble with people peeling this arm off, you probably want to go a little bit deeper if possible, unless you've disabled both of the hands so they can't do that. Um, and then again, even for like the gym, for me, I think of it like this. One of my old boxing coaches, he used to tell us to keep our hands up a little bit higher back when I was fighting back in the day to keep our hands up a little bit higher than what's necessary. So this way, when we get into a fight and we get tired, our hands fall where they need to be. And so in the gym, I'm, pri I'm just really trying to get that real deep, like super deep choke. So this way, if I'm in a competition and I don't quite get it deep enough, you know, because we're fighting at full speed and it's really against a tough opponent, then, you know, it ends up right where it should be or at least ends up in a place that's good enough to get the job done. So again, can you choke people straight up like that? Of course you can. Um, but again, in the video, I was trying to give you guys just some basic techniques and details to make it a little bit better. And again, one of the things that helps me out a lot is being really focused on getting to that deep grip all the way across the neck that's straight on the carotid and is super far back so they can't peel off the grip. So hopefully that helps you guys and I'll talk to you next time.